Spokane's NAAC president, Rachel Dolezal, is under fire after an interview with a local news reporter who confronted her for falsely reporting that she was African-American. Take a look at this really awkward encounter. Maybe we can is that your dad? Yeah, that's, that's my dad. This man right here is your father? Right there? you have a question about that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I was wondering if uh, <laughs> if your dad really is an African-American man. That's a very, I mean, I don't, I don't know what you're implying. Are you African-American? I don't, I don't understand the question of, I did tell you that, yes, that's my dad. And you, he was unable to come in January. Are your parents, I'm are not, they white? I, I Awkward. Uh, so Rachel Dolezal, as I mentioned, uh, is the head of the local chapter of the NAACP and has identified herself as at least some partly African-American, but her Montana birth certificate says that she was born to two Caucasian parents. Now, she was being interviewed because she claimed that she was being harassed. Uh, but the controversy arose when the reporter asked her about a photo that she had with an elderly black man that she was claiming to be her father. Now, these are her actual parents, uh, Ruthann and Larry. You can see them on either side of her at her wedding with her adopted children. Mm. Um, and her parents have come out and indicated that their family is of Czech, Swedish, and German heritage with some faint traces of Native American blood. Wait, she they, was the one in the middle there? Yeah, she was the one in the middle there. Uh, she looked in that really picture. different. I know. Didn't she? Yeah, <laughs> she, she's changed a the, little bit. And the, hair, maybe the, hair, we can, the hairstyle makes a difference. Yeah. Can we go to that first picture that we threw up real quick of her before and after the change? There we go. So that's a, a or earlier picture of her, and that is a picture of her now. Never, she looks a bit different. You'd never even you'd never be able to identify her on the witness stand. No. No, yeah. not exactly. So, so she's married to that black guy. She is married, yeah. And they have adopted children. Okay. They My also, understanding is that her parents have adopted children, which oh. uh, black children, who uh, that's uh, and so those are the adopted brothers, which she claimed were her kids. Wait, she has a black husband. She has adopted black brothers and sisters. Isn't that enough to be racially sensitive? Yeah. Like, do you really yeah. need to fake it like you're black in order to have any sort of position on the NAACP? To have to say, hey, I've got a ton of black people in my family. This is an issue that matters to me. That should be enough, right? Yeah, I completely agree with you. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying I culturally identify with this culture. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I identify with these aspects, whatever. But when you're saying you're making up a fake dad, like, that just seems so bizarre. Um, and it wasn't until 2007 her parents said that uh, Dolajal began identifying herself with the African-American community. So this is a relatively uh, recent adoption that she has taken on. So here are my favorite parts of all these lies. Uh, first of all, when she gets caught and the guy says, is this really your father? She has that moment of like, fuck. <laughs> and she's like, yeah. And then I was like, that's it. She, before I know anything yeah. else, she's lying. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so obvious she's lying. And then when he clearly knows that she's not African American and asks the follow up question, she has that moment of like, oh no. <laughs> like you could feel her gut sinking, like, oh, what have I done? I'm God, right? Okay, now my favorite I mean, lies about her. There's, no. She said, uh, just real quick, okay. are, you, are you African American? I don't, I don't understand the question. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not that complicated. Yeah, yeah it's right. pretty, <laughs> yeah, pretty straightforward. So that was awesome. Uh, I mean, this is 88 <laughs> ways you know you're lying. Uh, at one point, she said, "Well, we're all from the African continent." No, she did not. <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> okay, the minute I see that, I'm like, okay. I mean, that done. is true. <laughs> okay. I will give her that. There's a really cool Dawkins T-shirt that has a big A for atheism that says, "We are all Africans." I think it's an important point to make scientifically is an important point to make culturally. I don't think it stands up in this argument. Yeah, I, I wouldn't go and try to lead the NAACP because <laughs> no. we're all from the African continent. And then, uh, but what might be my favorite has nothing to do with this story except for the fact that she's an enormous and hilarious liar. Uh, she said she was born in a teepee. Mm -hmm. <gasps> no. And then when I read that, I was like, yeah, okay, I love this person. So uh, she's like a racist, <laughs> she's like a racist fake black woman. I think, yeah, well, except, but that's not even except, racist. No, that no, doesn't even make no, sense. No, so to be fair, did, she's not, I don't think she's racist. Her parents no, did no. live in a teepee, and then when they found out that she was like, they were pregnant with her, then they moved out of the teepee. But I think Wait, she just, what? she just wants to identify with 
some culture or wait, another. Wait, wait, parents lived in a teepee? They lived in a teepee. So they were for probably a, a brief for a brief period, period of time. Yeah. Where? Okay, in, in Montana. Montana. Okay. Oh. But she was born much later. Right. So, but when somebody says to me I was born in a teepee, I think, all right, well, two things hmm. are possible here. Okay. One is 94% chance that that's a lie. Because <laughs> there's like three people that have been born in a teepee in the last century, uh, and they're mainly in Outer Mongolia. Okay, yeah, well, and so and, and it's a yurt and not a teepee. <laughs> okay, uh, or if you were actually born in a teepee in America, you are the world's largest hippie. Okay, or your parents exactly. were, yeah. or you were like right. a summer camp or something. It yeah. definitely wasn't because you're Native American. Yeah, and so th please, spare me. so now it turns out that she is a tiny bit Native American, right? Her and Elizabeth Warren are going to yeah, have a Native so American I, off. Like, I'm not right. saying, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, Native Americans originally came from Central Asia. Turks are from Central Asia. I am also Native American. I'm half Puerto Rican. I'm probably also a bit Native American. <laughs> okay. So now, okay, we've established, okay, a hilarious liar. Right. Now let's uh, determine guilt. This is the fun part. Mm. Um, okay, is she uh, within her rights and to, if she hadn't lied, et cetera, to be the head of the NAACP? In Spokane, yes. If she hadn't lied, yeah. And uh, and they seem they they're backing her up, saying she's actually done a really good job. Um, now they're look, probably a little embarrassed too, so right. they got some incentive to back her up. But okay, I feel like she would have been totally fine in all of this, you know. And she's part of a community uh, board to to you know police the police, make sure okay. that they're not discriminating against minorities. But again, if your husband's black, your you know adopted siblings are black, have at it, Hoss. That's awesome. I, I love that you're involved in right. the community, and I I think you can represent black people. Of course you can. Why not? If they if they're willing to be represented by you, if you you know win a vote, what get appointed, whatever the head of the NAACP, that's fantastic. That a white person's the head of that particular branch, right? Doesn't it make you wonder though? Like, did she have any sort of pressure from her community to because? As she's going through which, these changes, which community? The, the white people pretending to be black community. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you the would think she, Americans saying, born like, in a TV her community. Her husband is black. Did she right. undergo this change before she married him? She went to Howard University, and her parents were saying that then she started changing her hair and she changing the way that she spoke. Yeah. That. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. Did she feel pressure? Did she feel like such an outsider that she wanted to fit in more? And that's really where the seeds of this right. lie started to be so. planted. Mm -hmm. that's and does point. that eliminate? Not. It doesn't. Eliminating the guilt, but does it make you a little more empathetic I'm, to kind I'm, of where she was right. coming from? I'm totally empathetic with her, 100 yeah. percent, not guilty. I, I, I let her pass on everything. I don't even care about the lies. I mean, the lies are—they're her own business. They, they didn't hurt anybody. They're really pointless lies. I mean, mm -hmm. she sounds a little troubled. It gave her a fun, embarrassing interview, but um, who cares? Why do we care? She, uh, the organization hired her. They'll now either fire her or not. But uh, she, listen to this. According, to, here, and here's who's guilty. I put a, I have not guilty for, uh, for her. This is my official court paper. Uh, not guilty, but her parents. I got to go this way. Her parents, come on, <laughs> guilty. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask about that. Yeah, like, Why are they throwing her under the bus? Yeah. Why yeah. not? How about no comment? Not interested. Mm -hmm. uh, according to court documents obtained by CNN. Uh, Rachel Dolezal's adopted brother, who is black, sought emancipation from Ruth Ann and Lawrence Dolezal in 2010. Mm -hmm. The adopted brother, now 21, said the Dolezal, so I guess back then he was 16, said the Dolezals used, quote, physical forms of punishment, which I think she also says. Yeah, about she was abused. Wow. Uh, and sent his brother and sister away to group homes because they didn't cooperate with the couple's religion and rules. Adopted brother wanted to live with Rachel, quote, in a multiracial household where black culture was celebrated and I have a connection to the black community. The papers did not specify Rachel's race. Petition for emancipation was dropped in a separate legal action in 2010. The court appointed Rachel to be the adopted brother's guardian with the consent of Ruth Ann and Lawrence. Isn't it interesting how we almost automatically assume, well, her parents must, you know, be wanting to celebrate different cultures and they want to, you know, they're, not, they're, they're colorblind with regard to wanting to have these kids when we sometimes forget that there is this, like, white privilege, I want to save you mentality that mm. sometimes comes with religious families and that mm. that could potentially be a motivation for adopting these kids. I mean, we have no idea and I, I can't pass judgment, but it does make you wonder, you know, how, how troubled she really was and how much more complicated her upbringing really was. Well, yeah, it, sounds, it definitely sounds like a complicated Yeah, household. Right. So I want to answer one of your questions. The NAACP uh, is not making any moves to fire her. In fact, they're supporting her. They're saying that she didn't violate anything by becoming the president. Uh, but the response on social media has been a dif little different, so I want to pull up some of these tweets here. Sure. One person says, hmm, interesting article about Rachel Dolezal. 
if she identifies as black, can she be transracial? So the hashtag transracial is now trending on Twitter, and so uh, it brings know, up Hannah, an interesting concept. I didn't know that, and I was just about to call her Caitlin. And it's yeah. inappropriate in a lot of ways. But no, blah, blah, a lot blah. of people are making that comparison, so it's a yeah. great point, yeah. Yeah, and, and are you allowed to do that? I mean, if you're, I don't want to make light of the transgender issue, and I, like, so, because people feel like they were born a different gender. Mm -hmm. Maybe she so feels like she was born a different ethnicity. Can you feel like you were born a different ethnicity? Mm, I, I mean, don't know. She went to it's, Howard University. She has, right. you know, black siblings as she's growing up. She she disagrees with some of the decisions her family makes. She ultimately marries a black man and really embraces black culture. I, I, who are we to judge, really? Yeah, Especially if she's no, not I'm gonna, doing it out of you know spite what? or hurting anyone. I'm going to rule no. Really? You, can, you weren't born, if you were born white, you weren't born black. That's not to say you can't adopt black culture. You most definitely can. But it's a different thing to say, I was born black. No, you weren't. You adopted that culture because you like that culture, and, and that's awesome, right? But it's like it's a person saying, OK, a Swedish guy being like, I was born Turkish. Well, no, you weren't. Well, no, you I, weren't. No, I, you, maybe I, you love Turkish culture, and that's great, and I, let's go eat kebab together. But you see what I'm saying? I think feeling that you identify and fit within a certain culture is totally acceptable and totally fine. I think she was fine up until she started saying, this is my father. I think that was when she crossed the line, when she started lying. If you say you feel like you're a part of a culture, like for me, like I'm Jewish, but I don't believe in God. So a lot of people will say, oh, you're an atheist then. I'm like, no, but I identify as Jewish. Like I'm still allowed to identify however I want to identify. You don't get to tell me who I, but once I start lying, that's I think when you cross the line. I'm with Ben on this. I don't know. I think that our culture is a lot less accepting than maybe the people at this panel <laughs> and maybe some of the people who are watching. And if somebody feels the need to protect themselves by lying, if they feel the need to protect themselves by changing their outward appearance in order to make it fit with who they intrinsically think that they are, I think we should support them. If they're not hurting anybody, I think we should support them. Like this feels like a huge gotcha moment. And then you're like, what exactly did we get you to? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? Like you really, she's, look, I mean, I don't know. And she's definitely, that's her, that was her husband. So she's married to a black guy and she may have black kids or, we don't, I don't know. No, no, Well, and in that wedding photo, she well, looked she, more white. It was mm -hmm. before she started to make the transformation. So her husband, who has stuck with her through this, has yeah, like, perhaps been supportive of and this it's transformation. And it's not like uh, white kids, so, and I don't have any problem with these kids really either, you know, uh, but it's not like white kids listening to more traditionally, traditionally African-American music and trying to imitate their perception of the way black kids behave, which is sort of, we would might mock, like, and maybe inappropriately mock, but she's like, in the trenches, yeah. like doing mm -hmm. doing good work, like you know, okay. or at least like who who, who cares? Yeah. I'm going to introduce one more piece of evidence. Okay, all right. Uh oh. Okay. Uh oh. Um, she has delivered lectures on the cultural significance of black women's hair. Okay. Now she's obviously made her hair appear to be African American, then giving lectures about the importance of black women's hair. It's a it's a bridge too far. Okay, so now oh, here's the oh, thing. That doesn't bother me. Okay. I disagree. No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> look, look, if she were a professor and this was something that she studied, she could give that lecture. She is a professor. Yeah, she's a professor and of she African American it. culture. She's a professor of African American mm -hmm. culture. She's an expert. But she's clearly pretending to be black. It doesn't matter. Okay, look at the, Even if you're okay. a white professor of Af African American culture, you have the expertise to be able to lecture like, on African American issues. Completely it is, agree. but it, it is the. I mean, I like. There's no question. It does not. Pass the absurd test. Yes, right. it, it's absurd. It's absurd. But to what end and to what harm? And for, okay. for good reason, and perhaps. For, right. I mean, and, and yeah. right. It's okay. And if and if no one is particularly objecting among the people she has pledged to serve, who are we to but, object? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I don't want confusion here. I, is she lying? Absolutely. We all agree across right. the board. Is it absurd? Agreed across the board. Right. Uh, it, can you be born black? <laughs> Even though you're not born black, we have some disagreements on the panel on that. Yeah. We're split on that, okay? Uh, but I, I, let's see if we can get consensus. I actually agree with you guys. Overall, not guilty. Uh, like, yeah, she lied, but she didn't do any harm, mm -hmm. right? It's right. weird, but but overall, she helped people. Uh, the, her, the chapter uh, mm -hmm. uh, likes her. The, she has, she's done good work on the policing board, apparently, et cetera. So we all agree, not guilty, right, right in terms guilty. of... Right. Yeah. Of what she's done with her life, 
And the, and the parents, I don't know if we go as far as guilty, but I, I'm willing to say guilty. Like, why? Why did you go out of what? your way to mm -hmm. find the media mm -hmm. and to say, Send she it, look, is look, not, look, blah, look, yeah. Look, yeah, yeah. Like, like, let it go, let it go. What are you disrupting her life yeah, for? Yeah, why are you disrupting yeah. your daughter's life? It's not, it's not your job. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to support your kids, and you don't stop being a parent when your kid gets to be 30.